Hello, my name is Daniel Yuck. Thank you for joining today. I appreciate you, your time, and your support. In today's video, I want to go over how I turn designs that aren't really tattoo friendly into something that's more tattooable. By the end of this video, you will be able to click away knowing how to pinpoint designs that aren't really tattoo friendly and turn them into something that you can tattoo on your end. Should you have any questions at all, I encourage you to drop a comment down below. I'll do my best to assist you in the best possible direction. Please don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell for me as I will be bringing more videos like this for you. With that being said, let's get right on into this. I figured we'd start here at the bottom. So I have this design right here. This is what the design looks like when I turn it into something that's tattoo friendly. You can see that everything is going to be able to be transferred over onto a thermal printer or an inkjet printer and then when I apply it on the skin and let it dry, I will be able to see all of the different textures and kind of determine how I'm going to apply them technically as the artist. Everything though is in a state where it'll translate over to either a thermal printer or an inkjet. Not all designs are like this and also it's important to remember, just because we like a design doesn't mean that it's tattooable or tattoo friendly. Stay with me, I'm gonna circle back and touch base on that. Let me kind of introduce that concept to you here with this design. So this design started off like this. So it's some sort of native AI image and I'm using this to get my points across here. There are a couple of ways that we can go about converting this into something that is more tattoo friendly. Here's the thing. Typically when I printed stencils, they don't print color. They print onto a purple carbon and then that prints varying tones which kind of help us guide us throughout the tattooing process. This is not going to transfer well if I were to try and print it as is. I've identified that this design as is in its current state isn't a bad tattoo design, but it's not tattoo friendly. So now I have to take a series of steps to make this tattoo friendly. So I have the design, the concept right here. I'm going to make it into something that's more tattooable. To do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the layer, this one here that I already did. And I'm going to recreate that here with you real time. So I have the original. I'm going to duplicate that. I'm going to mute the original. And then I'm going to go up to adjustments, hue, saturation, brightness, take saturation all the way down. I have a full in-depth video on this in case I'm going too fast for you here. And then I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that. From here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select invert. And then I'm going to go to color dodge. I'm going to go back to adjustments, select Gaussian blur. And I'm going to kind of adjust this until I get the right tone that I'm looking for. I think that's good right there. And then I'm going to do a clipping mask and then I'm going to go to merge down. So now I have this one design, as you can see right there, into, and I've converted it into something that's far more tattoo friendly. Let's say if it's too light, my thermal printer doesn't really pick up, you know, the sort of... Uh, shades here what we can do is we can definitely make it darker and to do that what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back to adjustments i'm going to select curves and then i'm going to bring this down as needed so you can see i can darken it all the way up like that but you're going to want to find a nice medium that benefits your workflow and the gear that you are using and then from here what i can do is save it and then now it's ready for print this is something that's far more tattooable you can see that the printer would print this as best it can, but you can use this for the reference. You're gonna come back here and you're gonna kind of know where to apply everything. You can see the varying tones here as well. But the point is that this is now something that's far more tattooable and tattoo friendly over where we started. Let's do this again a couple of more times here. So it's gonna be the same thing with this design right here. You can see that this one's very tattoo friendly and this one would be an awesome tattoo but the original design started with an AI sort of image as you can see. And we did the exact same thing. The process that I just showed you led us with these results right here. And then we also did it with this right here. So allow me to show you the original. This is the original right here, some sort of skull AI image again. And then from here, this is the tattooable version. You can see that these tattooable versions are tattoo friendly. Let's say I wanted darker tones and we're gonna go back to adjustments, curves, and then we can make these darker as needed depending again on the gear that we are using. This one as well, let me zoom in on the one before so you can see that's very tattoo friendly I feel. And let me go to my next point here. 
So keep in mind, that's converting it on a digital scale where we're using an iPad. Let's say if we don't have an iPad and we're using like the old school method where we print out on paper and then we draw it into the stencil paper, we can kind of approach it with the exact same method that I'm gonna share with you now here. So you can see, for example, I have these designs right here. Let me remove my stencil that I've done there so that way I can kind of talk about that and elaborate a little bit more. On this design right here, we can see that there is a lot going on and it's very busy. There's, a lot, there's also a lot of saturation in different areas. This design was made to be read as graphic art and not a tattoo. I feel that this is a great tattoo design and can be a solid design if applied correctly, but first we have to make the stencil. So you can see if I zoom in on the roses, there isn't any sort of like prominent lining. There's a lot of shading, color, and highlights going on, but there's nothing signifying any lines or anything like that. So that right there can be a problem, especially if we are a beginner. You can see in between here, the saturated parts here, there's some shading that requires here, but this is actually a part of the draw that we have to pay attention to and kind of leave those open areas. So that's also another big uh, thing that we have to kind of accommodate for when we're creating stencils. We can't necessarily just, I mean, we can technically, if we have like an inkjet printer, we can print this as is and then kind of just follow it to the T as best we can. But if we don't, then this is gonna be something that we have to kind of accommodate for. So what I mean is I started adding lines over the design to help me map out what I am actually going to be tattooing. For example, you can see that I started right here on the roses. Now the roses have a map. I actually added some petals here and there, but you can see that these areas right here have a map. These are gonna be my guides when I'm actually applying this sort of design. So the original design started off as something that's not very tattoo friendly, but it's creating something that I can work with from ground up using the original design only as a reference. So you can kind of see, let me see if I can kind of show you the difference here. So you can see the difference that these details really do make. They do impact the stencil. And I really do feel like the impact, the overall experience, letting us know what we're going to be tattooing, the confidence. Tattoos can get really messy and go south really quickly, especially if we're trying to wing it every step of the way. So it's always better to have a solid plan of approach versus trying to wing it. Even if you print this on paper, the original design like this, what you would want to do maybe with like a green pin or something of a different color, you would want to go and make the lines around the roses. And then from there, you're going to want to retrace those lines onto the carbon paper. Make this tattoo into, I'm sorry, make this design into something that's more tattoo friendly. Because like this, this is kind of blurry. You know, you want to map out the entire design first before you begin to apply it to any sort of stencil. And then you want to make sure that when you do that, that it has a nice clean read to it. So in my opinion, these roses look nice. They read cleanly. They don't look um, messy or anything like that. There's just some lines that are supposed to be going through there, as you can see. But overall, they do have a nice clean read in comparison to what's there. I changed some aspects of the rose there, kind of just added my own artistic touch there. But overall, you get the idea. So what I'm doing is I'm building this, this or I'm rebuilding rather this design from ground up to kind of accommodate my application, my technical application, my capabilities and my workflow. And I feel like this is something that is kind of overlooked as a beginner, not really being able to identify which tattoo designs, or I'm sorry, which designs rather need a little bit more work to make them something into something that's tattooable. Not every design is tattooable. Which brings me to the next demonstration here. So allow me to kind of mute that one and come up here. So you can see that I'm kind of going over the same thing here. So here is a design. Let's say if the client was adamant, they really like this one for whatever reason. From here, we're gonna definitely wanna map it out, especially if a design's kind of like this messy. So you can see it's really like organic looking. There's no prominent lines or anything like that. So let's say if we were just going to try to kind of wing it and tattoo this, I don't really see any sort of good end results happening. We should know where all of the lines are, where the shadings are gonna sit, basically have a good plan in play before we even begin applying the tattoo. So you can see that I'm adding my own outline here and I'm kind of mapping out my own rows to 
I guess my liking, how I like it. Some variables change, but I'm keeping the overall integrity of this design as this is what the client wanted. But the idea is to convert these muddy, messy lines right here into something that's more tattoo friendly, which is gonna be lining. Now, keep in mind, as I mentioned, if you're doing this on paper where you're printing it out, the design, you're gonna wanna kind of repeat this process on paper as well, and then apply it to your carbon paper. You don't wanna kind of use the stencil paper and then map it out on the stencil paper. You wanna have all of the lines in play first and then apply it to your stencil paper. But you definitely wanna have a good mapping as to where you're going to be applying your lines, what you're gonna be doing, how it looks. So you can see when I mute the original design, this design's looking nice. So when I'm done with the entire design, I should get one nice clean solid read from my stencil. And that right there is of the utmost importance I feel. So the ideology, the logic, what I'm trying to share with you here is when I'm looking at a design, one of the first things that comes to my mind is if it's within my capabilities. And not only that, is if the design itself needs any more work, if I need to kind of make adjustments, if some areas of the designs don't make sense to me, then I need to figure out to make sense of those areas. So you can see right here, for example, there's a lot of distortion going on. So when I am tattooing this, there's no way that that's gonna change. If I feel like this is distortion now, when I'm applying it with a needle, then there's only gonna be more distortion, which is why I have to go and clean this up manually by hand and draw it in. So every design is going to be different. The way that we approach them is essentially never going to be the same. It's always going to be a little bit different, but the fundamentals are going to be there. We're either going to have to kind of draw in some designs or we're going to have to convert them digitally. Everyone will be different again, as I've mentioned. Those are the two methods that I've used to create something that's not so tattoo friendly into something that I'm able to tattoo. There are some pros and cons and drawbacks. So for example, this first method won't necessarily apply to every single design as some are gonna be different. So when that happens, we are gonna have to draw in some areas. So for example, you can see that the original design or the original image here was nice, clean, and crispy. It had uh, varying tones and colors going on, which is why it was able to translate nicely over into something like this digitally easily. Now, I don't think it'd be the same for example this one here that we were working on just because one it's already blurry which means if we convert it it's only going to create a little bit more distortion two there's no prominent lining anywhere so right there off the and right here three i can't tell what's going on here so that right there is going to let me know that i have to go in there with the pencil and kind of start mapping things out to uh suit my wants and needs as the artist so for example what i would do is from here i'm gonna make sure i'm on the right layer I would kind of get a general, I'm gonna kind of ignore this area for right now. Kind of map this out. So I feel like the skull kind of goes this way like this. Somewhere around there. So that kind of gives me a guide now that I can work off of. And then from here, I'm gonna kind of just continue building up this design. So you can see I'm mapping it out different. And this also helps me figure out how I'm going to approach it when I actually tattoo it. This area right here, since I can't determine what this is, I may just end up leaving that out and kind of adding these leaves right here in a manner that I see fit. So I'll go like this, for example. Then create a little bit of excitement like that. And then you get the idea like that. And I'm gonna repeat this over here. This is necessary, I feel like being able to do this is very crucial. If you can't, don't get discouraged early on, you know, just practice drawing on your downtime and every time that you can, and you will see gradual improvements. So all of this other stuff we're here, I'm gonna kind of leave. I can always get another rose and put it behind there. You get the idea, but that's how I would approach this. So now I'm mapping this design out into something that's more tattoo friendly. I have a line weight going on as well. So this kind of lets me know, okay, I'm probably gonna be using an 11 round liner for all of the outside of the skull. Probably use a three round shader for the shading so that I can be precise in the teeth area. You get the idea. So I'm beginning to even map out what needles I'm going to be using just by getting the stencil going on here. 
these methods have been tried and true for me. They really don't ever let me down, especially when I go in there and start manually tweaking things the way that I'm showing you here. I feel like these are the best approaches for me. They've worked well. My goal with this video is to give you information that you could immediately use to apply and better your tattooing on your end. And I hope that I was able to do that at the very least now i do hope that you're familiar with the concept of not every single design is a tattoo friendly design once we're aware of this we as the artists can be more equipped to prep designs for clients when they are not so tattoo friendly if you have any questions at all i encourage you to please drop a comment down below i'll do my best to assist you in the best possible direction before you go please don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell for me as I will be bringing more videos like this for you. I appreciate you, your time, and your support. You have a great day.